Hi, I'm Sarah Jane Dunn. I'm a makeup artist and an actress, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a nice natural makeup look for the summer for my beautiful model, Rachel. The key with having a good base for your foundation and for your makeup to last a bit longer through the day is to thoroughly cleanse your skin to begin with and then apply a nice moisturiser. So I'm going to be applying the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturising Lotion to Rachel first. You don't need a huge amount either, just a, a nice thin layer to give the skin some hydration so the foundation or whatever base you're using doesn't come into the dry spots in the skin. After a moisturiser, I'll be applying skin primer and this just again gives a nice little level and layer to the skin. It's, it's always good to apply makeup in thin layers so you get a bit more longevity. So I'm going to be using the Art Deco Skin Perfecting Makeup Base. Again, you just want a really fine layer. And it's good to apply this to your T-zone, but you're most likely to get oily patches throughout the day. The next really good little tip is to use a mattifying cream, it's, it's very good especially if you've got quite oily skin. Again I'll just apply a thin layer of this to the T-zone. It's also very good for summer because you get hot, the skin becomes a little more, a bit more sweaty. So this is a great little tip, tip um, and this is the MAC mattifying cream. You only need a very small amount of this. I'm literally just putting it on the T-zone, so across the forehead, down the nose, and just on the chin. So as a foundation for Rachel, I'm going to actually use a BB cream. So they're very light, and um, BB stands for Beauty Balm or Blemish Balm, and they're actually really good because they're a lot of them are mineral based and this actually has anti-inflammatory um, benefits and is quite healing for the skin and a lot of them contain an SPF. This one's actually SPF 30 so it's fantastic for the summer, it means that your skin is protected all the time even if you've not got all your sun cream on, you've actually got the SPF in your face so it's great for anti-aging as well. Usually you can use these on their own as well so they're a great product all in one usually, moisturiser, serum, um, primer, all of those things, but when you use it on top of all of these things that you've done already, it just gives a, a heavier, slightly heavier coverage. So I'm going to do that for Rachel now. I'm using the Flathead foundation brush as well, just to apply the product to begin with. I'm working from the nose out. This is usually where most people need more coverage. And then you can blend the product out so you don't have a thick line around the, the jawline that's going to help sign your foundation.
So I've applied a full face of the BB cream to Rachel, it started from the nose and I've blended outwards, so to the hairline, just so that there's no line around the jaw and around the hairline. And I'm going to use this little brush, you can get these everywhere now, this one's by Crown Brush, which is an online supplier and they're really cheap and they're great. And what I'll do is just keep this one clean. So I've put a foundation on, a BB cream on with this one, and I'm going to just buff out around the jawline and around the hairline just to make sure that the BB cream is spread nice and evenly. And this also spreads it onto the ears, which is an area that often people forget. So just to blend it out. And also down onto the neck and into the hairline. And then with the BB cream, you can build up the product as well. So I always put it on the back of my hand so I'm not applying it straight onto the face. That way you can just have a minimal amount on the brush. And if there's any little areas that need a little bit of extra coverage, now's the time to do that. I also apply a very fine layer of this on the eyelids. Which just gives a nice base for any eyeshadow that you're going to apply or if you're going to have a day without eyeshadow as well in the summer which is often a really nice look just nice and natural then it just gives a nice even coverage on the eyelids and i'm just going to apply a little bit of concealer to a couple of areas where Rachel just needs a little bit more coverage than the BB cream allows. And I'm using a Lancome concealer, this is a liquid concealer. Again, I'm just going to apply a little amount to the back of my hand. And I still have some of the BB cream on the back of my hand, so it's quite good because you can mix the colours together to get the correct colour and a bit of a lighter consistency than the concealer would allow on its own. And apply it with Quite a firm headed brush just to begin with. I'm just going to apply it around the nose, which is where most people need a bit of coverage. And then a good tip is to pat any concealer with your ring finger. So this is quite a gentle touch and it just means you get a nice blend rather than the concealer building up quite thick. Just patting it, just blends it into the skin and makes it look really natural. And then in any bigger areas, I use a little blending brush, which actually you mainly use for eyeshadow, but it's a really good tip to use these for concealers as well. This one's by Crown Brush again. Just dab that into your concealer and then dab off the excess. And then for areas like the chin again, which is where a lot of people just need a little bit of extra coverage, you can just gently brush that on so you're not getting the big dots of concealer, which you can get if you're using a firmer brush or Sometimes even your finger, if you're just applying the concealer with that. The next bit we're going to do on Rachel is the under eye concealer and I'm going to use the Clinique Airbrush Concealer which there's lots of these on the market for concealing the under eyes but this is one of my favourites. Again I'm just going to apply the product to the back of my hand first so you don't have too much product when you apply it straight to your face. I'm going to use a quite firm brush just to apply the product first. And we put it on the inside of the, the eye area next to the nose where we often get little dark shadows and then take it gently onto the eye and then again with the ring finger I'm just going to pat the product in. 
You don't want this to look like you've got on dry concealer on. I just put in a small amount on, it will reflect the light. So now we've applied all the base, what we need to do is set that and make sure that will last for the day. And I'm going to use the MAC Prep and Pine powder, which is fantastic. It's a translucent powder and it's loose, but you can get it in a pressed version as well. But I really like the loose version. I always put a little bit into the lid and then the key is to tap off the excess powder so you don't want to put loads of powder on your face and defeat the whole point of putting fine layers on. So a little bit on, tap off the excess, and then first of all just dust it lightly on the T-zone. So the forehead, down the nose, and down the sides of the nose, and then a little bit on the chin. And then just with what's left on the brush, I'll just take that out under the eyes and around the rest of the face. You don't need to rub it in too heavily as well. If there's any areas that you've concealed, just tap off the excess and you can just dab it gently as opposed to rubbing, which will set the powder in but won't rub off the concealer that you've got. And then finally, it's also good, so before you do this on the eyelids, you just again with the ring finger, just make sure that the foundation hasn't set in the creases. Smooth it out, brush over with the powder. And then you've got a nice base for your eyeshadow, which is the next step. So to just apply a nice natural look and a nice eyeshadow, I'm going to start with a base. So this is Bobbi Brown eyeshadow in foam, and I'm going to use just a nice firm eyeshadow brush. Again, I always tap off the excess on my hand so you're not putting too much product on. And I'm just going to apply this all over the lid. So over the eyelid and take it up to the eyebrow as well because it's a nice highlighter. As you can see it's really subtle and gentle. The next step in the eyeshadow is to just apply a nice neutral colour on the eyelid. I'm going to go for like a pinky, corally colour. It's from the MAC collection and this is this colour which is called Paradisco. I'm just going to use a slightly smaller brush than I use to apply the shadow all over the eyes. Again, don't need a lot because we don't want it to look heavy, we want it to look quite natural. So. Take the excess off. I'm just going to apply this onto the lids so you can see it's quite a nice natural colour and we don't want to take it any higher than the socket line which is the natural line in this area of the eye. So next we're going to add a little bit of definition to the eyes. So we're going to add this nice shimmery brown, which is by Stilla, and it's called Holly Go Lightly. So use a little brush like this, which is kind of a curved, funnily shape to it. And I'm going to take the excess off and back of the hands again. Close. So, First of all, with this brush, I'm going to apply just in the outer corners of the eye area. It's quite lively. You don't want to take it any higher than the socket line. You don't want to take it any further in. If you put the colour that's too dark further in on the eye, it closes the eye over, which if you want a smoky, heavy look for an evening, you can do, but for a nice, natural day look, it's good to keep the eyes nice and wide. 
And then once you've applied the shadow, you take a clean blending brush like this one, which is quite soft. This one is a Bobbi Brown one. And just go over where you've applied the shadow and blend it into the socket line. And that just gives a really nice natural define. The basic rule with eyeshadow is to have a light colour, a slightly darker colour on your eyelids and then the darkest colour on the socket line. And you can do that with any colour combination. Once you've applied your darker colour to both eyes, if you want to enhance any more, you can just use a blending brush. Just lightly load the brush with eyeshadow. And a good way to see where your natural socket line is on anyone is if Rachel, you look straight at me, and you can see this area where the eye goes in the most. Look straight at me, and then close. That is your natural socket line. So you just blend the colour into that area to give that depth and definition. Just to add a little more definition, I'm going to apply uh, this gorgeous Bobbi Brown eyeliner. It's a long wear liner, so it's great for summer. Stay on all day. I'm using a little eyeliner brush, this one's a little travel Bobbi Brown one, which is great for sticking in your handbag. And this is in bronze shimmer, so it's very similar colour to the darkest eyeshadow we just used on Rachel. Get a little bit of the eyeliner. And it's always good first to draw a line on the back of your hand so the brush is loaded and also is the right shape for applying the eyeliner. And then you just want a really fine line. And a good tip when you're doing this yourself, it's not as easy, is to dot the colour on and then connect the dots. You just want to take it just a little bit past the lash line just to give that elongated look to the eyes. As you can see, it's not too heavy and not too dramatic, but it just gives that little bit of extra definition. Now, part of applying makeup that lots of people neglect is the eyebrows and they're really important for opening up the eye area or if you've overput your brows over the years it's great to give them a bit of definition and fill them in. Um, I use the HD Brows palettes which are brilliant. Um, I'm great to use it in the bath um, and they come in three different colours but they've got a little wax which you can work in or tame the brows with and then four different colours so you can use them as eyeshadows as well or you can use them for filling in the eyebrows. So with just a little eyebrow comb such as this, it's good to brush the brows up first and then just take the brush along the top just to calm down any brow hairs that have lifted up and again just by lifting them up it opens up the eye area. And Rachel's really lucky because she's got really nice, thick, dark brows. So she doesn't really need much definition and much filling in. But it's really important when you fill your brows in. I'll use an, an angular brush like this one, which again, you can get these anywhere. To use powder like this palette, take the excess off on your hands because you can always build the colour up. But when you put too much on, you don't want to have to take all your makeup off and start from scratch. So really take off the excess so there's hardly anything left on the brush. And then just gently sweep over the brows just to give a nice bit of definition and shape. Your brows should be big, medium, small. 
so and a nice straight line underneath so that's what you're going for if you don't have much brown you want to fill in a nice look we also don't want to fill them in too much because obviously this is quite a nice natural day look And a good tip for just keeping brows in place for the day is to use a clear mascara I'm using a number seven one. So you can apply it straight from the wand and just literally comb the brows through. As before, comb them up and then just tame any flyaway hairs down and that will just hold them in place for the day. So now I'm going to finish Rachel's eye look by applying nice black mascara, which is great for any day, whether you've got a bit of makeup on, whether you want to go for a really plain look. And I'm going to use the MAC Splash Proof Mascara, which is great for summer as well, so if you're sweating or if you're getting in and out of the pool or if you're on holiday, then this is a really nice one. A good tip for applying mascara as well is to get the brush in at the root and then wiggle the brush up in a zigzaggy motion. So that applies the mascara but without making it really clumpy. And then if you do want to add more, you can add a second coat and you've not got that clumpy look. I'm also going to just put a little bit of mascara on the bottom lashes. This is optional, some people like it, some people don't. I think it opens the eyes a bit more and it's a really nice look. Um, but I won't put too much on because if it's summer, we don't want to look too well overdone. Just look up to see for a minute. And again, you can use a zigzag motion. I'm now going to apply a blusher onto Rachel and this is Benefit Dandelion which is really nice, quite a light pink colour which is great for the summer, great for not looking too made up but having that nice fresh glowy look. Use a little angled blusher brush. I apply quite a lot because it's a light colour. Then again, tap off the excess. And just smile for it. I'm going to apply it to the apples of the cheek and then take it up in a C shape or back to front C shape. You can see it just adds like a nice glow but it's not too heavy. Just one of the final bits of the makeup before we go on to the lips is to apply a bronzer to Rachel. Um, again, this is great for summer, just gives you that healthy glow. Bearing in mind you've got your SPF on underneath and the BB cream, so give you that nice tan look. This is the Lancome Star Bronzer, which is really nice because it's, it's quite matte, so you don't get that shimmery look, so it looks quite natural and so on. You can use this big MAC bronzer brush. I'm going to rub off the excess on the back of my arm just so that it doesn't go in and really heavy to begin with. And then it's good to apply bronzer where you naturally catch the sun so it looks more natural. So on the forehead and the hairline, and then down the nails, tickle, chin. And if you do take it down onto the neck, it's good to not put it down the centre of your neck because just that bit of your neck never really gets the sun. Just lift your chin up. So I always take it down the outside of your neck first and then just blend that in. And again, don't forget to blend in the jawline. And then with what's left on the brush, I'll then take that across the rest of the face.
A good tip for a bit of definition is to use your bronzer again. Just use a smaller brush this time, this one's a philosophy brush, brush, and then just put that into the bronzer. Again, take the excess off on the back of the arm. And then you just want to apply this just underneath the cheekbone where you've applied the blusher. And that just gives the illusion of really defined cheekbones. And then you can blend that in with the bronzer brush you used before. So you don't want anything that looks like a line, but it's just giving that illusion. I'm now going to apply a really natural lip to Rachel, just to give a bit of definition on lips, give a bit of colour. I'm using a Max Factor pink, and it looks quite vivid, but what I'm going to do is blend it into the lip line. It's always good to start on the cupid's bow, which is top of the lip, drawing in. And then from there, you can draw a line up to meet the lines you've already drawn on the lip. And same on the bottom, it's good to draw a line in the middle and then bring the pencil to meet the line you've drawn. What I'm going to do is just blend that lip line in and put the liner all over the lips so it's not harsh line, doesn't look too made up. I'm not actually going to use a, a lipstick or a lip gloss um, at this point on Rachel's lips. I'm just going to use a lip balm. I'm using Carmex. So this will again blend the lip liner in. It's far more natural for a, a summer look, for a day look. And if you've drawn the lip liner slightly outside of the lip line, if you want that fuller look as well, then this is good for blending that in. And it's the same form of application. So I'll start with the Cupid's bow and then bring the brush up to meet where you've already applied the lip balm. And start in the middle, and then bring the brush in to meet. Just to finish off the look, I'm going to apply this Art Deco clear gloss just to the middle of Rachel's bottom lip. This gives the illusion of fuller lips. So I'll take this. You could, if this was your own, you could just apply it direct, but I'm going to apply it to the back of my hand. Take the same lip brush as before. And literally, you just want, I've got hair, so I just want a tiny, dab of it and that's all. So you don't need to blend it in, you don't need to spread it, you just dab it in with your finger and that just gives a nice glowy glossy look but without putting it all over the lips and without it being too full on and too much like an evening makeup. Okay. So there we have a nice natural finished look for summer. We take you through the day and into a night out as well if you want it, but it's really nice, it's long lasting, you've got lots of layers on there, but still a really natural look. But a nice natural cheek colour and a nice defined but still quite natural eyes. Very pretty daytime looks, also a very pretty bridal look, which is the kind of thing that we'd go for for a bride. And uh, yes, it's beautiful. <laughs>